What's up guys, ATCG here. Welcome back to Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck of the Day. Today we're profiling one of my favorite decks and one of the decks that we featured a lot on this channel. And it got a new update from Eternity Code, so I think it's time to do an update on how the deck is going to function from here on out. And I'm talking about Dragon Maids. I think a lot of people love this deck, but they haven't really been able to figure out a way to play it competitively. But this is the version for you if you're looking for a Dragon Maid deck that you can do well with. And I'm going to show you exactly how you're going to use every single card and engine in this deck so you can function in a very proper way so that you can combat the meta. So before we begin, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, like the video if you enjoy it, and now let's get to the deck profile. So to start off, 3 Kitchen Dragon Maid. She's probably the best one to normal summon because she searches you anyone you want, then you can get one to the graveyard. And sometimes you can search your Nurse Dragon Maid, so you can have a way to revive more monsters, because you can then bring her back with some of the revival spells. Or you can search your Ernest, so you can special summon another one from your hand, so you can have more monsters. It depends on your hand, and basically what you want to do with this deck is you want to normal summon this, or you want to normal summon your Parlor, and then you want to get your Nurse Dragon Maid in your graveyard by either adding it and sending it to the graveyard or sending it directly with Parlor, and then you want to link away the one that did that, your kitchen or your parlor, and then you want to bring your nurse back with one of your revival spells, which I play a lot of, and then nurse will bring back the one that sent her to the grave, and then you basically have three dragons on the field, and then you can summon your Romulus and pretty much start doing your guard dragon combos. So that's basically the standard combo of the deck, but you can extend it a lot further depending on your hands. I'm going to show you the engines that I play so you can build a bigger board. 3 Parlor, like I said, she very much does the same thing as Kitchen. She can also send the Fusion spell to the grave, which is kind of important, because the Fusion spell can recycle itself by bouncing a Dragon Maid from the field to the hand, so you can summon not only your house Dragon Maid, but now we have a new monster, which I will show you once I get to the extra deck. And pretty much you do the same thing, you send your Nurse, you link Parlor away for your Striker Dragon, and then you bring back your Nurse with one spell, and then you bring back your Parlor with Nurse, and you keep doing the same thing. Now the new Dragon Maid to Chamber Dragon Maid, she doesn't change the combos, she just makes the combo a lot easier because on summons you can search one of your Dragon Maid spells and traps. Usually you will search your Hospitality because it's the one that summons from the grave or your hand. And then you can send the appropriate attribute, one from the deck to the grave with a different level. So you send the big dragons so you can tag out at the start of the battle phase. And you don't want to play three because you do already have a lot of normal summons because you usually want to summon your kitchen or your parlor, but she's a good extender. If you have an Ernest in your hand, so you can special from the hand, or if you already have the hospitality, so you can send your changeover and then you can go into your Dragon Mage shoe, which is House Dragon Mage's Dragon Form, the new fusion monster, so you can have an extra negate on the field. And I play two Nurse Dragon Maid, just two because you want to search her, don't want to draw her, because drawing her on her own doesn't do anything, because you need to have another Dragon Maid in your graveyard to be able to summon with her. But I play two because once you use the first one to go through your combo, then you can summon another one from your deck with Heavenly Spheres, and then bring back another one from the grave, tag them both out, so you will get a plus two from that because you have two monsters on the field and you get two more monsters in your hand. And then during the next turn, you can normal summon the one you tagged out to bring back another one from the grave. And that's how you keep building advantage. Sometimes you have to use your entire hand going first in order to make a decent board. So you want to be able to have some kind of follow-up. And Heavenly Spheres is the way to follow up the next turn, unless you want to lock your opponent even further by summoning a Goliath, which I don't run in the deck, because I think that like, trying to lock your opponent even out is kind of a greed play, and you want to be able to keep playing during the late game. And for the big ones, I play one lower par, just one level 8, because again, these are bricks, you don't really want to see them, you want to search them whenever you need. This is the best level 8 because it has an effect that kind of works like a Forbidden Chalice, you can discard from your hand and then target an effect monster, that monster won't be able to use its effect this turn. So you can stop negate monsters like a Crystal Wing or pretty much anything your opponent might have, so you can go through your plays. And one level 7, one Ernest, which is the best big dragon because you can, as a quick effect, you can discard her to special summon a Dragon Maid from your hand. This one's the one you search a lot with your kitchen because once you have a Dragon Maid full of, a uh, handful of Dragon Maids, you can search this, discard it, and then pretty much get them all out of your hand so you can do your combo without even using a revival spell. That's it for the Dragon Maid monsters. Now let's go to the Dragon, generic Dragon engines. So we start with a Rocket Engine. I play a big Rocket Engine, play three Rocket Tracer, 
because again, Rocket Tracer gives you extenders to be able to bring more negates out because once you have your quick launch or you can just summon this with your boot sector launch, then you can just use its effect, get another rocket from your deck, and that's pretty much a free salvage so you can have more morning gate. And for the non-tuner level 4 rockets, play one magna rocket, basically because it's the bigger one along with the other one I'm going to show you. It doesn't... I don't use the effect a lot. I mean, you can do it with Boral Sword, but it will rarely happen. And one silver rocket, again, because it's 1900 and you need the biggest bodies just in case you just need to get into beatdown mode in some games if you have an awkward hand. And to round off the rocket engine play 3 Absor Router, which is a great card. Not only it is an extender, but it also helps you get to the rocket you need. So if you don't have a rocket, so you can special summon this from your hand, you can just descend it to the grave with I made Dragon Ravine, Foolish Barrier or Shrine, then search your rocket tracer, and then you can bring it out with your boot sector launch and pretty much do the exact same thing. So one more thing about this card, that's a level 7, so you can summon Shu with it, because she needs a Dragon Maid and a level uh, 5 or higher Dragon Maid, so you can bring it out with the higher level monsters. Same thing with Red Eyes Darkness Metal, pretty good card. Unfortunately, this card is going to get a out soon, but I don't think it hurts the deck so much because you don't really abuse this card like a lot of other dragon decks. Maybe you can use it twice with your LPMP team, but still, it's not a card that you... It's not necessary for the combo, it's just a really good card to have in the deck, and that's why it's here. And again, it can be a fusion material for sure. Tempest, because Dragon Ravine's in the deck, you can send this whenever you want. It's pretty much a free beatdown monster every single turn, and free fusion material for sure. One Galactic Spiral, because this helps you get your 38, which is another small dragon engine, just one card engine that helps you get another negate on the field, which is what you want to do, because if you want to play pure dragon mates, you can't do much. Maybe you can end on Shu and his spheres, which is not going to help you win a lot of games, because that's not the best board possible. So if you want to win consistently with this deck, you have to incorporate all these dragon engines so you can make as many negates as possible. One Dragonity Phalanx. This is here because with Romulus you don't search Dragon Ravine usually. Usually you will go for your Divine Lance because this helps you get just a level 4 lower dragon on the field with Phalanx. You equip it, then you special summon from the equip zone because that's Phalanx effect. And then you have a monster to go into an LP Apiste. Because if you search your Ravine, you cannot you can send your Tempest, but Tempest is level 7, so you cannot summon LP Apiste with it. You play Ravine in the deck just in case you draw your Phalanx or your Divine Land, so you can have something to search with Romulus. Now let's go to the spells. We have the best spell in the deck, which is 3 Dragon Maid Hospitality, which is now searchable thanks to Chamber Dragon Maid, which is actually a huge boost to the deck because this card is so important. Not only does it help you set up for your field, it also sets up your graveyard, so you can send your, your higher level dragon mates, so you can bring them back during the, the battle phase, because not only does it special summon one from the hand or grave, it also sends the appropriate attribute with a different level from your deck to the grave, so you can get your dragon mates going. One changeover, this is the fusion spell of the deck, it's now more searchable than it was before, you can search it technically with parlor because you can send it to the grave, and then once it's in the graveyard, you can bounce the dragon mate from your field to your hand, then get this from your grave to your hand. But now you can search this also with your chamber. And it's a more important card than ever before, because Shu is actually a monster that you want to summon turn 1. Unlike House Dragon Mate previously, she didn't do much going first, but Shu is actually a negate, so that's why you want to search this turn 1 and possibly get another negate on the field. And I was talking a lot about the revival spells, play a lot of them, because you need to form a combo, just like I said, you need to bring back your nurse, and then nurse will bring back another one, so I play 3 War Legacy Girl Dragon, I would not play less, even if it's once per turn, yes I know, but still, it's a really good card, it's basically the fundamental of the combo, this or Hospitality, and the next card I'm going to show you, which is a very common one, and you want these because you basically want to have a striker dragon and two dragon maids on the field. Once you have that, you can do everything you want. So this is why I think maxing out on this is actually really important. And one monster reborn because, like I said again, the more revival you have in the deck, the better. Play three quick launch. Sometimes you cannot search your tracer with your abs or router. Maybe your hands are not the best, but this card is actually really good. Even if you don't have anything, Quad Boral makes it so that Savage can have enough gate even if you cannot do any part of the combo. Because you just summon Quad Boral, then you pop itself, and then you bring back the rockets you used to sling summon it, and you make these into a salvage, and you have Quad Boral in the grave, so you can put an Unmarked Eagle. So even if the most awkward hands, this deck can bring out some form of interruption. Some hands really look weird, but if you think about how the combos function, then it's really easy to bring out a lot more negates than you usually think you have once you look at your hand. One boot sector launch, because Striker Dragon is a fundamental part of the combo, because you want to link away Parlor or Kitchen, so you can bring them back with Nurse, so Striker Dragon can search you this, and then you can bring out all the rockets from your hand, usually your Tracer, because you search this with your Absor Router, so you can get your Salvage on the field. 
One foolish burial to send your Abzor router to search your tracer, or if you already have your tracer, you can either send Tempest so you can have another monster on the field, or you can send one of the big dragon mates to tag out, or maybe sometimes even just a normal dragon mate. So if you have your Nazar, your nurse in your hands, you can bring back that monster. And the exact same thing with Dragon Shrine, but it's just a once per turn card. It's not so important to the deck like the World Legacy Guard Dragon is, so I don't think running more than one is optimal. And for Romulus targets, we have one Divine Lance, which is the card you will usually go for because then you equip it into Romulus, and then you summon your Phalanx from the deck, you equip it and you summon from the equipped zone, you have more dragons on the field. But in case you draw either Divine Lance or your Phalanx, there's Dragon Ravine, so you can send monsters from the deck to the grave. That's it for the main deck. Now let's go to the extra deck. We start off with two House Dragon Maid. She's now easier to summon because you don't want to fusion summon her, you want to summon her with shoes effect. And when you summon her, it's not like she's a kind of a disruption, she's more of a push play because you can just clear your opponent's board. And this is why this card was not really good going first, because your opponent had to enter the battle phase in order for this card to do something. So I don't think summoning her fir going first was optimal, but now Dragon Mage Shu, which is the her dragon form, so you can summon this with a high level dragon and a dragon mate. Unfortunately, it's on any dragon-like house, so you have to have like an Abzor router or a Tempest or something. But she's a universal negate, she can negate anything, and once she does, she returns to the extra deck, so you don't want to play more than one because she can just recycle herself, and then you bring out your house from the extra deck so you can have the big monster on the field to pretty much be able to push for a game during the next turn, so that's why this card is really really important for the deck and I'm so glad that Konami decided to print a card like that because this is exactly what Dragon Maids needed. Even if you want to play a pure Dragon Maid form of a deck, you don't want to include rockets and stuff, this card helps you have a win condition, which the deck didn't really have one before, which is huge for this deck, so that's why I love this card. Now for the Synchros, play one Savage because you can summon this with your Tracer very easily, get more negates. I play one Dragon Berserker of the Tenny because during the late game you have a lot of tracers but if you only have one synchro monster to summon with then they're not really doing anything. So I decided to put this in because it's a dark synchro so it can be summoned under tracers restriction. And I didn't want to play another Savage because this card helps you push during the late game. Savage is basically a going first card to try to stop your opponent from going off but in case they did you want a card so you can be able to push back to go for a game. Play one Xyz monster, which is 138, because you can summon this with Galactic Spiral, and it's a dragon, so you can summon under the Guard Dragon restriction. For the Lynx, play one Striker Dragon, not only because it searches your boot sector launch, but like I said countless times, it puts your parlor and your kitchen to the graveyard, so you can bring them back with Nurse. For the Guard Dragons, of course, LP and Beastie, you cannot play a dragon deck without them these days, I think. For the Link 2s, play the one Romulus. This card has a second effect that people forget about. If a Link monster is summoned under its marker, you can special summon one dragon from your hand. It cannot be used as Link material and cannot use its effect, but you can use it for Synchro, you can use it for Xyz, and it's actually a really handy effect because sometimes you have a lot of monsters in your hand that you won't get out. I play two Heavenly Spheres because this card is very easy to summon this deck, and like I said, it's the follow-up of the deck, so as long as you keep summoning this card, you should have something to do during the next turn. So that's why I think playing two is really important for the deck. One quad Boral. This is basically here for the combo I mentioned earlier. In case you draw a really, really bad hand, but you have a quick launch or you have the tracer, you won't be able to summon negate. But if you don't have this, then you won't be able to have a link in the grave for Savage. So that's why I think this card is really good. And against some scenarios and some decks, you can pop your opponent's monsters with this and bring rockets from the grave. It won't happen too often, but if it happens, then it will be game changing. One triple burst. This is basically here in cases you have like a Romulus and an LP on the field and you don't have a way to summon Beastie so you can use LP's effect, but you have a Tempest, then you can link your Tempest and your Romulus to this so you can have the, an arrow that Beastie points to or LP points to so you can summon from the deck or the grave depending on what you need. And the last monster is the one Boral Sword because Boral Sword is really, really good in this deck. You can OTK with it very easily. It's very easy to summon this. And of course, because it's a dragon, so you can summon it under your guard dragon restrictions and you have so many big monsters, so it's very easy to OTK if your opponent didn't make an insane board. So, yep, that's the deck, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more in-depth uh, combos with the deck, we do have videos on it. The new support doesn't really change the combo, it actually makes it a lot easier. And sometimes you might be able to summon a dragon mage shoe on top of everything you're going to see from the last combos. But again, it's pretty much the exact same. It's just, it feels a lot smoother now. So check it out if you feel interested in learning the deck a little bit more further. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel because we have a lot more amazing content coming and we'll see you next time.